All right, for this video, I wanted to go over the U.S. tax issues for E-2 visa holders. So what is the E-2 visa? Well, it's part of the E-class of visas. We have E-1 and E-2. So E-1 is a visa, a non-immigrant visa issued to an individual who is a, a citizen and resident of a treaty country. And the E-1 is specifically targeted towards international trade. So this allows the individual to enter the U.S. to conduct trade. Um, but again, it's a non-immigrant visa, so it's limited to a two-year period. And then they have to leave the U.S. or renew it, right? Now, the E-2 visa is also issued to individuals that are part of a treaty country. But in this context, it's not necessarily with respect to international trade it's an investment visa. So if you're an E2 visa holder, the visa is issued to you because you're going to invest a substantial amount of capital into the United States to run a business. Um, and so that's why you're being granted this non-immigrant visa. Now, the uh, E2 visa um, also has a maximum stay of two years and there must be an intent to leave after the expiration of the visa. There are options to renew. Um, a list of the treaty countries where you can get an E1 or E2 visa is found on the State Department website. Uh, I'll put a link, I'll put this link below in the description so you can go visit that to see if, you know, if, if you are um, a resident of a country that does have a treaty with the United States for this, for this purpose. So back to the tax issues, right, the, the essence of this video. So what are the tax issues? Well, if you're an E2 visa holder, so it's a non-immigrant non visa, by being issued the visa and stepping foot into the United States, you're not automatically a U.S. tax resident. Okay, so U.S. tax residents, no matter where they are, are U.S. citizens and U.S. green card holders, right? The third way to become a U.S. tax resident is if you meet the substantial presence test. So the substantial presence test means that you are physically present in the United States enough days during the year to become a U.S. tax resident. Now, E-2 visa holders generally become U.S. tax residents for that purpose, right? Because their intent is to move to the United States, open a business, run the business from the U.S. They're not just hoping to be temporarily in the United States for a few days a month and then leave. No, they want to move to the United States and live there and work there. Now, once you step over that substantial presence test line, you are a U.S. tax resident, so you're filing Form 1040, right, which is a U.S. individual income tax return for individual tax residents. In contrast, the 1040NR is filed for individuals that are non-residents, so they don't meet the substantial presence test, but they have U.S. source income. So E-2 visa holders are certainly going to become U.S. tax residents if they're in the United States enough. Uh, days during the year, which generally they are. Now let's talk about the closer connection exemption. So Form 8840 is used by individuals to, in effect, override the substantial presence test. So if you're in the United States enough days during the year, so let's say more than 120, but less than 183, and then when you do the two-year look back, you, you hit the substantial presence test days. If you find yourself in that position, you can argue a closer connection to a different country and that'll override the substantial presence test so you won't be a U.S. tax resident for that year. Uh, this is not to be confused with the 8843. So the 8843 is filed for exempt individuals to accomplish the same thing, override the substantial presence test. But um, E-2 visa holders are not exempt individuals. Exempt individuals would be uh, students, um, on, on an F visa, um, a lot of uh, teachers and other kind of trainees might be qualified as an exempt individual or individuals that are in the U.S. for medical reasons uh, can, can be exempt. That's not this case. So if you're an E-2 visa holder, you're not going to be filing 8843 to try to override the substantial presence test. What you will be doing maybe is filing the closer connection exemption via 8840. But as I've highlighted here in bold, this generally doesn't work because the individual is in the U.S. more than 183 days during the year. And that's that's the, um, the key point here, right? So if you are in the U.S. more than 183 days, 
you can't argue the closer connection exemption. The closer connection exemption is leveraged when you're somewhere between 120 and 183 during the current year, but because the substantial presence test uses that two year look back where you count all the days in the current period and a percentage of the prior year and then a percentage of the prior two years, you can find yourself meeting the substantial presence test doing that calculation even though you're not in the U.S. more than 183 days during the current period, okay? But again, if you're an E-2 visa holder, the intent is to live and work from the U.S. on a full-time basis. So you're going to be in the U.S. well well over 183 days. You might be 300 days in the U.S. during the year, 330, whatever it might be. Um, so for that reason, you're going to be a U.S. tax resident. You're not going to be able to leverage the closer connection exemption. Okay, so that covers it for this video. I hope that was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, obviously, you know, feel free to leave me a comment below. And I look forward to seeing you again on the next video. Thank you.